Hey everyone, if you're new here, my name is Danny Christine. I am a childcare business owner, consultant, and a digital content creator on childcaresites.com where you can access resources for childcare professionals such as yourself. These resources include things like courses, a membership program to join a network of other child care providers, website design services, and webinars like this one that you are about to watch. This webinar features the founder and CEO of Kangaroo Time, Scott Wayman, and Scott brings us through the different benefits that having and using a child care management software in your child care business. It, he explains what those benefits are and how they can be helpful to you. So grab a cup of coffee, grab a snack, sit down and get ready to learn exactly how you can benefit from taking advantage of a system such as Kangaroo Time. A little while back, I mentioned that my Child Care Sites Network membership was going to be open soon and I'm so excited to announce that it is finally open. So I just wanted to make that quick announcement before switching over to the webinar. So after the webinar is finished, make your way over to childcaresites.com and sign up for membership. All right, let's get into the webinar. Are you ready to get started, Scott? I am ready. Okay. So for everybody watching, this is Scott Wayman. He is the founder and CEO of Kangaroo Time, and we are going to be discussing all things software automation for our child care businesses. And I would strongly recommend that if you guys do not have a um, child care management system that you're using within your programs that you find one and, and use one as soon as possible because it, it alleviates so much stress for me in my business and um, it, it's so helpful. So thank you, Scott, for coming on and sharing the information that you have with um, my community. <laughs> so Absolutely. Get started whenever you're ready. Yes. Yeah, so um, today we did a, a webinar earlier. Um, many of you might not know, but um, when Kangaroo Time, when we, when we started into the, the environment of COVID-19, we made a decision as a company. So we'd been on this hamster wheel of, of building a technology company, grow, 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 do everything you can to, in the startup world, it's all about marketing, top of the funnel, all the digital channels. Um, Genevieve and I, we live in this world of, of, you know, how can we help more people? How can we get more access? Well, um, we saw how tumultuous the first couple of weeks were with COVID-19. So um, just, just in the chat, how many of you shut your centers down for a period of time? Or, or how many of you uh, had times where where you were at half or, or, or whatever. Um, what our data showed was um, attendance went down to about 21%. So that was either centers were completely shut down for those first couple weeks, or um, they, I see it, I see it, we shut down, or, or they were down to like essential employees only, remember that, or only essential employees and you know, we went from being licensed for 120 and an average attendance of 110, and now we're down to, you know, 13 people a day. So uh, the, the world changed, and, and what Genevieve, myself, our team decided to do was we would convert all of our efforts from growing the company to advocacy and getting as much content as we could to our customers and to everybody else in the industry. So, so the last 13, 14, how many weeks are we in Genevieve of, of just pure um, content? Geez, I know that we were on, we're counting it by days and I think we're well, I think we're like 110 off the top of okay. my head. Yeah. 
Um, we've been doing it, I think, since March 14th was the day. Yeah, yeah, I, that's that's right. Um, at that time, we decided, okay, everybody that comes into contact with us, they get they get a you know a piece of the sales motion. The hey, can we do a demo for you? That was the interface of of that you would have. Danny, we met you at a trade show, and I think I, rather than taking the time to get to know you, I spent time demoing you and like, how can I squeeze you into our software? Um, and, and that's where the relationships went. And I think the realization we had was this is a time that, that's so tumultuous, and this is a time that's going to either or either make or break many of the, the customers that we serve out there. So we're, we're not focused on um, growing and, and all the metrics that we measure to make our investors happy. We're just relentlessly prioritizing staying alive. And, and what is the content that we can get to our customers? So for those of you that are on the call, um, please join our, we, we started a Facebook group. It's called KT Child Care Connect. This is a place where you can go ask questions about software if you want. Um, people have been asking about our competitors here. Um, this is merely a place where we can facilitate. Um, we also give data on what check-ins and check-outs are looking like. Uh, so, so it's a kind of a cool resource. Also, um, you know, before I jump into to my spiel about um, our story at Kangaroo Time, also take a look at our blog. Um, Genevieve and her team have done a phenomenal job of bringing content and look um, with, from some of the best and brightest. Um, Danny has done some content for us. Uh, our audiences are are sometimes huge. Uh, I did one today. It wasn't like the biggest audience, but we'd love to have you get a notification anytime uh, these guys post the great content. And again, we've been so fortunate to have many of the thought leaders in the industry lean into this and and work with us to put out great content. Uh, and then the final thing, uh, you know, like uh, with, with Danny's uh, content, Danny does such a beautiful job of getting uh, content out to each of you in the form of YouTube. Um, we have a Kangaroo Time YouTube channel. Please join that. So uh, I was just looking for uh, uh, an article. Um, many of you don't know our story, but we were this little startup that I, I founded the company and hang on, let me see if I can find the article. It's better with a visual. I founded the company in 2015. And like many companies, um, the first couple of years are, are make it or break it. Um, you know, a childcare business or an early education school, uh, they have their struggles and, and we get it. But um, seven out of 10 startups fail within the first couple of years and nine out of 10 eventually fail. Um, so, so doing a, a, a new startup company with some incumbent competitors is a crazy idea. Uh, and I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I, had, I had already started another company and, and done pretty well, um, had, a, had a nice exit, um, was able to to leave that company when it came time. And I told my wife at the end of 2014, I said, I, I've had this vision for years and years since Chase was in, um, in childcare and we could never get updates. And I was super frustrated with, with the way that they handled their payments and their business. Um, I, I think I can, I can create a company that will help a lot of people. Um, and I'll get into what we do and in my opinion on technology and what it does for you and your business and how it helps you scale and where the economies of scale are. Uh, but before that, we got to 2017 and we ran out of cash. And um, I, I'm here in Long Beach, California, where I founded the company. 
all of our employees were here. And as a last uh, kind of like a last gasp of air, just a last ditch effort to keep the company alive, I entered into this contest called 43 North. And what it is, it's a contest that's funded by the state of New York. And it's like Shark Tank. They, uh, <laughs> and I promise you it's legit, even though, <laughs> even though their website, I should prepare for this stuff better. Anyway, the, the city of Buffalo invests in companies and they do it as an economic stimulus play. So they wanna bring startups there so to uh, provide for job creation and a, a number of just just uh, just to to provide a future. So there are many people that grew up in the city of Buffalo, and it's a Rust Belt city, and they couldn't find jobs once they graduated college. And anyway, th this uh, this state initiative, uh, we entered into this contest, and it's crazy. If if any of you ever have some time watch my um, finals pitch. My finals pitch was after multiple rounds of competition. Uh, I had to pitch for judges like this uh, on Zoom. And then we, they flew us, our team to Buffalo, and we had to go through all these different, um, it was like Hunger Games events. And then the finale was on stage in front of nearly 4,000 people. And if I played the video, which I won't, I'll spare you, You'll see the first minute that I, I'm on stage, I walk on, I give the chairman a big hug and I turn around and it's my Shark Tank moment and it's the wrong pitch deck, 100% wrong. And, and I, I, so I looked over at the, the, uh, the, uh, the production assistant and I said, hey, it's the wrong deck. And people were kind of like booing me and one of the judges says, hey, just ad lib, we don't have time, kid. And I said, oh, okay, and I, I started pitching. Um, but the good news was my pitch was terrible. Um, but we had a team that was working on some, some really great um, and innovative things, and they invested in us. So we had like negative dollars in the bank the day that we won. They wrote us a check for $500,000, and it kept us alive. Uh, and we moved to Buffalo with with I think uh, three employees, a total of three people. We had like 10 customers. Uh, and now we have, we're coming up on about 40 employees and hundreds and hundreds of customers. So uh, it has worked out. Let me tell you a little bit about um, my thesis and hold tight. So let me bring that up. So when, when I founded Kangaroo Time, like I had said earlier, I had come from my first startup, which was essentially Kangaroo Time, which I'll tell you a little bit about, for hospitals and health systems. So I had had this journey and this, you, you know, when, so each of you has gone through this really tough time with, with COVID-19. And I know that if I, if I opened up and had like a real serious dialogue with each of you and said, are you a better business person today than what you were in mid-March? I think the, the answer is absolutely. You've had to heighten your EQ, your business IQ. Um, some of the situations I know that you, you have dealt with, with understanding finance, the PPP loan, uh, employees, safety, everything has been put on steroids because you've been on this learning journey that that has really forced each of you to to up your game um i i think in tumultuous times you come out of those times uh, with a lot of upside and, and with a lot of skill uh with metal on metal sharpening you know you, you come out of those times when i founded kangaroo time i had just come out of one of the most crazy career spans uh, that that I could that that you could ever map out. So I started at, at I quit my job in 2007 uh, when a friend of mine that had worked with me at a former company had said, "Hey, I'm starting a company. I just cashed in my 401k. There's this huge opportunity in healthcare, 
And uh, I went to my wife and she said, that's fine, but you're crazy. Like, I'll support you, uh, but, but that's like, you're giving up your salary. And I did, I didn't, I didn't make a salary for the first two and a half years. Uh, and then, um, but that, that worked out for me. It, it, it all worked out. I, I, and what I participated in was one of the largest um, digitizations in modern history. So um, at my first company, what I saw in motion from 2007 to 2015 in my time at my first company was essentially going into every single hospital and physician's office and then having zero systems or very few systems. And then within my time there, nearly 100% of people having software. And, and I was on teams and I owned uh, part of the company that provided those uh, platforms for everybody. And my role there, um, my role was as a, I was one of the founders of, of a division that saw a technology launch. So imagine, uh, I'm, I'm sure many of you have heard of ProCare. ProCare is kind of the ind industry standard or many of you have heard of Easy Care. Those two were kind of the early companies. Um, imagine being the, the implementation specialist or the, the person that was on the ground as the first two, 3,000 childcare centers onboarded those and the learning advantage those people had in building products. Um, so so my, my vantage point coming in to early education had been shaped by this laser focus on workflows. So every line of code in the computer systems that our users use being super useful. Um, and, and I'll get into this in, a, in just a bit, but much software, are, are, uh, there, there, are, there are a lot of software platforms out there that require you do more work. Um, they create a lot more cognitive dissonance or, or they just make you, they make you crazier than you would be if you were just on paper. And I'll give you an example, you, you know, my wife, is, is a provider. Um, she used to go to work uh, prior to 2007. She would chart on patients. Everything was on paper. She had a super fast process on paper and she would come home. We used to like take turns making dinner. Uh, she would make it one night. I had my specialty, which is like hot dogs or spaghetti. You know, I'm, I'm an accomplished uh, uh, chef. Um, for sure. Um, and, and then it turned into they implemented their EMR or their digital software platform at her health system. And all of a sudden she had, she saw the same number of patients each day. Uh, but she was charting at home until after I went to bed. So, so she, it even got to the point to where I installed, um, a, uh, a docking station next to our bed. I mean, come on. You know, they say keep the TV out of the bedroom. I was introducing like a, a workflow assist right next to the bed so I could crash out and she wouldn't have to get up and plug in her laptop because she was charting until midnight every night. And then she would get up and do it all over again. That's an example of software that becomes a burden rather than a benefit. Uh, and, and many of you, I, I know many of you probably use some technology, whether it's in the center or communicating with your families or with your, with your, your staff, uh, and the workflows and the, the interoperability, how it fits into your business, how it serves the stakeholders is not necessarily a net positive. Uh, and if you're doing that, you've got to, you've got to flush your technology footprint. Another area where software becomes completely inefficient is when you look at like how well systems talk to each other. I know many people probably use, let's say you use ProCare and you use Tadpoles. Uh, when I founded the company, um, 
I worked as a director. I moved into a center and they had pro-care and tadpoles. And one of the first things that really, um, that really lit up for me was the alignment of your, of your parent engagement platform and your child care management system or your revenue engine, your, your collections platform, your payments, your billing, whatever you call the, the, your CC, your child care management system, that alignment and ensuring that the data exists in both and them not having interoperability automated is a huge, um, is, is a huge uh, uh, creation of work uh, and it does not create what we call a strong information exchange. So uh, one of these things that you should be relentlessly looking for and pushing is any software that you do implement or any technology that you introduce in your classrooms, into the business, or that parents interface with, you should be looking at how well the information exchange is deployed. So do parents get value out of it? Do teachers hate using it? Do teachers hate using it? You get resistance. You get 60-year-old teacher that's like, I can't do this. I, I don't know what it is. Does the company support you? Um, one of the, there are some drivers as to, to why uh, some of the software is so bad uh, and some of the software, it, it, I, another thing I like to talk about is um, if you look at early education, a majority of customers like health systems in the US uh, were without any sort of digitization that, that was computer based. And the beauty is many of them were able to kind of wait out and implement software as it became more mobile friendly and more user, you know, more based on principles of user centered design. So is it beautiful? Does, does it help you uh, in your day to day? Um, and this, this entire concept is, is something that we as a company uh, call childcare 2.0. So, so the 1.0 version of childcare is pre-digitization or older tools that weren't quite as skillfully designed. Uh, and there are a few components of that. Back to, to timing, you guys as early education business stakeholders, you're so fortunate. You exist, your, your business is in the sweet spot of really beautiful scalable technologies. And for goodness sake, guys, we have this. Can you imagine? Uh, I was on a walk with my wife last night. And we were having an argument about, I can't even remember. It was something factual about an actor. And uh, I think it was a mix up between Kevin Costner and somebody else. And, and this is something that, you know, rewind 20, 20 years ago. This is something you, you want to like call the smartest guy you know. And, and ask him because he's a movie buff and then you get his voicemail, uh, which is a tape. And, and by the time I got out my, my third sentence, uh, she was kind of like, no, that wasn't Kevin Costner, that was a, another actor. Um, she, she was completely connected. Um, so location enabled devices have really changed the game for us. And the concept of user-centric design. So many of you use platforms that look like this. I'm sorry, this, this looks terrible. The user experience, there are so many, uh, other than it being blurry, uh, there are so many user um, interface and user experience concepts that are just rotten here. Um, and we, I say user interface, user experience, all choppy. We refer to this as UI, UX. Um, what we look for is something that's more beautiful and clean and something that, that, that leans into the cognitive science. So when you use it, it makes sense. It, it has um, less of a training curve. Uh, but, and I'll show you a couple of things in just a moment because we're just now introducing our, our staff. Um, it, it's our staff management platform. So the ability to, to make schedules, for employees to request time off and really 
at the core, what that platform does is it helps you understand utilization, which is the lifeblood of all of your businesses. Um, and as we know, that's been the, the kind of the most treacherous part of navigating what, what COVID-19 has had to present. Another area where, where I feel like um, you, you all are in kind of the sweet spot of technology with, with regard to timing is um, we're in an era where software platforms don't just stand alone anymore. Um, you know, we, we, a year, two years ago, we launched our, the first ever bi-directional interface with childcare CRM. And, and so many customers have come to us and said, you guys have, you know, basically a replacement for a tadpoles. You have a replacement for pro care. Why don't you do a replacement for childcare CRM? And the answer has resoundingly always been because we don't want to. Um, Childcare CRM has a very, very different discipline instead of core competency. So for us to acquire that knowledge would be a long road, years and years. Uh, and to catch up with them would be very tough. Whereas we felt like in the other, in the other product categories, uh, we, were, we were on this accelerated track to, to build kind of a, a very nice platform. But Childcare CRM, helps you to automate your top of the funnel, um, your top of the funnel business and marketing outreach, right? So it does all of your drip campaigns. It helps you automate all your nurture journeys. Um, it has very little to do with um, childcare management systems or childcare management software with the billing, uh, with, with managing your teachers, uh, your staff, your families. It's a great compliment. Um, and the user experience, I'll show you, I have a little demo in this deck here, um, but the user experience is pretty awesome. It's like using one system. So uh, the, the other thing is, you know, we, we have a partner that does security and door lock. Um, their door lock system is so, is super advanced. And they set, they, they manufacture amazing hardware. And I'll do a quick demo of our door lock platform. Essentially, if a parent has the kangaroo time app, they can tap the back of their phone to the door and it will open the door and it will prompt their check-in. Um, for your staff, they would have our staff app and they would touch the phone to the back of the door and it would then authenticate that they are on site so that there's no time theft and it will allow them to, to clock in. Um, and in fact, when we talk about integration um, versus interfacing, I think this is something else that every, uh, every owner should look for. So if you're gonna buy and invest a monthly software fee, uh, just be assured, I, th I think one of the first things you want to do is assure that those platforms, the multiple platforms that you have, are, are, they're able to stitch together and work essentially as one system. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you um, just real quick. There's, we have a quick demo of the childcare CRM integration. And it essentially, this is their old, I need to get this updated. Um, essentially when you tag a, well, let's say a family does a tour and they decide they're gonna register they say yes. It'll send all that information over into, into Kangaroo Time. So you can see here, there's, oh wow, we've changed so much. Uh, and again, that, that this is something um, with, with more modern software, software that you don't install, software that lives in the cloud, software as a service. It, it gets modernized. So immediately when those children are registered, a notification sent to the director or the enrollment coordinator, whoever it is. Um, if there's a change made in kangaroo time, we send information back. So the systems talk to each other in real time, which is really uh, cool and efficient. And 
Again, this is a Kangaroo Time parent. So they have the Kangaroo Time parent app and they can touch the back of their phone. Look at that. My phone has all these motion commands and I just set off the, the light. Um, by just touching the back of the phone, there's a token that exists inside the Kangaroo Time parent app or the staff app. Um, we did a, uh, a group demo with them today and uh, we, sh we showed our products off and so many of the security features that exist there are, are super advanced. Like being able to set up uh, one of these door readers at the front door and then being able to set up like, uh, if you want to, multiple door configurations. So uh, if, if a parent or staff is supposed to only be able to go into certain rooms, you can give them access. Um, so it's really interesting. Most, most of our customers use PC at the front door and that's it. Uh, what we found is uh, our customers have been really happy with how the kangaroo time system checks in and checks out children. So if you use easy care or pro care or some of the older systems, they'll typically have a kiosk. Um, ours uses the, the kangaroo time mobile app. And when the parent is on site, they can click check in. Another cool feature that we, we, we released in lieu of COVID-19 uh, is the ability to send a message into the classroom or to somebody that's handling check-in. So if you aren't letting parents in the doors to mitigate contact and, and kind of keep track or to, to up your up level your contact tracing, uh, the check-in check-out mechanism can be done from outside the school, which is really cool. We also have our, our billing platform is, is one of the most advanced. The revenue cycle engine is super advanced. We were getting customers that were saying, hey, we're also like all of our financials are in QuickBooks. Can you push over all the family details into QuickBooks? So we wrote a bridge or an integration uh, for QuickBooks Online. Uh, there's nothing else like it in, in childcare. We also have a bridge for QuickBooks Professional or Desktop. But that's not really a big deal. What, what people are starting to use is the online version. So this is actually a, a somewhat of a new feature, but having that complete integration story. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how no, Flexbook syncs all of your... I'm not going to show you that. Um, and then finally, you know, the miracle of, of building an all-in-one platform in, in our opinion is you build this super prolific acquisition engine. So imagine all the data that we're pulling about the child and the family and giving back to you from our classroom automation platform or the platform that um, families use, or sorry, that your staff uses in the classroom. And then imagine all the data that we're gathering as we automate your enrollment. Um, as we integrate with childcare CRM and aggregate the number of tours and your, your parent metrics uh, from partners like childcare CRM. Imagine all the, the, the data that we have being as data minded as we are and really leaning into artificial intelligence and machine learning when it comes to your revenue cycle. Um, we, we feel like we are building this, the, one of the most comprehensive data stories that's ever been told in the world of early education. And that brings us to um, dashboards and, and giving you tools at every single level, level. So the owner level, the director level, if you have multiple centers, if you have a regional manager layer, we, we will help you build dashboards that aggregate all, all that data. And it's not just our data. So, so part of doing the deep, deep integrations with companies like Childcare CRM is to assure that the data that you need all in one place to understand we can, we can partner with those guys, uh, with those companies, sorry, and, uh, and give you it uh, kind of all in one place. Um, 
so so a little bit more about us i think our our thesis has always been about three things one helping early educators build and work within thriving and very viable businesses uh, the other thing is like i said before writing every line of code to assure that everybody in the operation has time allocated for what's important. And then the third thing, and, and I've got a kind of a funny story about this, is to, to help you and give you the framework to build great relationships with your team um, and also with the families that you serve. In fact, um, I, I told this story earlier. We had a customer that um, when they onboarded, they said, we love your tools. You're creating a lot of automation for us, but Scott, this thing where parents, they check in on the mobile app, you got to turn it off. Our parents can't see it. We want them to come in and sign the clipboard because that's where we get interface time with our families. And I, I said, that's, I think that's a little short-sighted. You know, I, I think that's a little short-sighted. I think having your parents buried into a clipboard um, and signing something and okay, whatever, um, and distracted, I don't think that's as beneficial as giving them a beautiful user experience and imagine it. It's like them calling an Uber and saying, um, the moment that they get into the Uber, you bastardize any, any opportunity for the driver and the passenger to have a good relationship. I think technology actually enhances the probability that there will be a good experience in the car, you know, or, or, or for you guys, technology enhances that the parent will be better oriented with your goals and with your quality that you're fighting so hard to represent day to day. Um, so, so again, let us help you with a beautiful digital experience and some modernness. And again, showing that family when they come and tour your center that you are high tech that you are on the cutting edge, that you have this platform that doesn't just pass out a four digit code that somebody could probably guess and breach your center because there are only so many options, four factorial actually. Um, but, but you could breach that system. Um, rather, you've got a cutting edge, unbreachable, digital tokenized system that goes right on the parent or the staff's phone it allows you to see what's going on with access control. It allows you to set bumpers. So, so remember that quality has so much resonance with the families that come and tour your centers. Um, so manage and grow your business. Um, here are a few of the features. I'm getting low on time uh, and I wanna jump into the live system and show you some new things. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's, let's pause there um danny any questions um let me check the registration questions i know we have a few um and i just want to reiterate that it definitely is a highlight if you do have a um a, a software system especially one like kangaroo time where you're able to communicate with the families like uh, th that is something that we highlight during our tours. And I, I know that there are a lot of programs don't think to do that, but it's definitely a marketing um, strategy. Um, we have someone that wanted to know about uh, automating payments. Is that something that Kangaroo Time can do? Yeah, it is. Um, and let me, let me show you. So the, so automating payments and setting up, uh, uh, payments that, that will, will, uh, that are, that are due on a certain day. That's cool. Right. Like, but I, we, we actually create, help you create these flywheels of automation. So it, and it doesn't matter how you bill and in fact i think many of you bill in a very static monolithic one 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 way for everybody um type of methodology because it just makes it simple when you have automation 
that doesn't care, that's going to carry out all the labor, regardless of the number of SKUs that you have or the number of approaches that you have, why not trick it up? Why not when a family comes to tour and they say, well, we're a military family and we're always low on cash until the third of the month, so can we pay on the third of the month? Set up a billing cycle that's monthly, military, billing cycle, and set those up so that they, the, the, the framework and the components of your billing engine of your revenue cycle are completely automated. I mean, everything down to when the reminder is sent, um, everything down to when a late fee is pushed and processed. So a kangaroo time customer does not even have to go into the, the, the family's account and put a late fee. It does it automatically for you. And you know what we find, Danny? Customers that set this up, centers that set this up, they mitigate bad debt. Um, because you know families know when payments are due because the system's communicating with them and they bump their revenue um, between one and three percent immediately because people i i know you guys hire the most maternal wonderful nurturing people on the planet and you know what that means it means they're bad at being tough about the business agreements and contracts in your business so let the software break the kneecaps and be the bad guy for you. Right. So, and parents love structure, children love structure, right? So families love that framework. I, if there is no way in hack that, that I would remember to write all my checks and pay all my pay, pay everything. And let's say everything set up and automated. So I, I almost make it, I, I cringe. My, the last check I write is in this building right here. It's for my homeowners association dues every month. It's really expensive. And if you forget about it, which I have, it's $25 late fee. And I've, I've cussed many times about that. So um, you're doing a service for your family. But not only that, um, I'm sh I, I don't know if, if many of you, you on the call um, take payments from third-party vendors. Uh, we have a full agency billing platform uh, and it will help to understand and it says look we're an alpha um, it'll help to, to uh, understand what families should be paid by the agency type by the frequency of payment it'll do all the calculations so if any of you are just putting stuff into the um, into the subsidy website and just hoping you get a check this will keep all the scores this does all the reconciliation. It's a pretty amazing billing engine. That's awesome. Um, and I just would love to add in that this is the perfect time to, if, if you are a center that kind of doesn't already have a billing um, system where you're accepting card payments or bank account payments, this is the perfect time to kind of make that excuse to switch over to do that. That's something that um, we did in my center. We have been accepting cards and bank accounts for about like a, a few months I would say six months or I think the start of the last school year but we found that a lot of families were still paying by cash and check and it's kind of just inconvenient we're on a weekly schedule of collecting tuition to have to run to the bank every week um, where I know most if not all of our families have a credit card or debit card so we have now made it a new kind of COVID-19 policy that we're not accepting cash or checks right now we gave them notice and if anybody's kind of struggling with the idea of like how am I going to make this switch give your parents notice put it in your uh, update your handbooks if you have them and you should um, and up or update your contracts. One of the things that we recently did was ask uh, our families to fill out a form where they, you know, agree to get their card or bank account deducted for tuition weekly. And like Scott said, that I think this will very much help us with those late payments. They won't be happening as frequently. We won't have, you know, parents behind on their bills. So I'm, I'm all for this. <laughs>
Any one of, one of the other thing. So many of you are probably terrified of those pesky credit card fees, right? So one, if you've ever paid somebody with Venmo, Cash.me, PayPal, you probably noticed that, I, you know, I'm going to pay one, one of my buddies for, we went out to dinner, I'm going to send them money on Venmo, I'm going to use my credit card because I get points, and boom, it, it says, no, yeah, you can do that, but you're going to pay your own credit card fees. And, and I think the credit card vendors have put, put it out there that this is illegal. It's not at all illegal. Um, our platform allows you to do this, the very same thing. So if a parent goes to make a payment of $100 with their ACH, if they've, if they've gone through putting in their routing number and their checking account number, it's free. But if they go to use a credit card, they're going to be charged at 3%. And guess what? Parents will pay the 3%. My JetBlue card, did you know that I get four points for every dollar I spend on childcare for the rest of this year? So if I spend $12,000 on childcare and I put it all in my JetBlue card, I get 48,000 points. That is four round trip tickets from LA to Buffalo. So, I mean, I'm gonna use it for the fun stuff, not traveling back and forth, but, but it's, it's one of those that allows you to mitigate costs. The other thing is the billing engine, when you go to, to set it up, you can require that your families put in a method of automated payment. And, and it, like you said, Danny, you just, you just re-release your contracts and you say to your families, we are, we are requiring that you use kangaroo time now or, or whatever billing system you use. And guess what? You have to have a required authorized withdrawal payment. Not to say that if you put a, you know, your ACH on file and things get tight, this the mobile app will allow you to go and switch. It'll even allow you to go and, and pay like $50 on 10 different cards. We've seen it. We've seen all the behaviors, um, but it's really prolific. For many of you that I know that have the old ProCare terminals, um, or, or some of our, con our competitors that are a bit older, it's problematic to have a, a family change their credit card. They do it all here inside the mobile app. Another one of the big benefits I don't think I mentioned is that your parents, again, when the, the parent engagement platform and their payment gateway are combined, your parents are getting that muscle memory too. So on top of the automation of of uh, for you where you're spending zero hours a month doing billing because it's all set up as soon as the family registers uh, or, or if there's a change, you put it in one time and the flywheel of automation takes care of all that billing for you. Well, the parents are getting all this muscle memory because you're doing their daily reports with our classroom platform. They're in the platform. We, we average 10 times per day per family um, so imagine the, the, the prowess you're getting on the marketing side, uh, the connectivity, that, that intimacy within the relationship that you have with your families. Families, we've had centers that have been purchased by a private equity group um, and, and good for those owners. Their owners get to sell their business and they're in the twilight of their career. But those centers, they, they go off kangaroo time and the parents are calling our support line saying, how do we get you guys back? Because we don't get all the, the good stuff. So, Yeah, I can imagine how frustrating it would be to be a, um, a, a, in a have my child in a program that it was so easy to make payments and you know monitor what they're doing in the classroom or all these different things and then all of a sudden that stops um i don't know why so, uh, a new program owner would choose to do that <laughs> um do you want to take more questions right now or wait until yeah more minutes yeah uh, i i've got i see the one here on immunization yeah is it if i tackle that one yeah that's fine so um, 
So with immunization, there's a couple things here. Let me start out with staff. Um, so just for so the people that are listening uh, or watching the replay of this, because I know many people would watch on YouTube um, but can't see the question, so I'll just read it. Um, someone wants to know. I may have missed it, but is there a place for immunizations um, uh, within the platform? There is, yes, and and not only is there a place to record all those, and I, and I'll show you, but there are also remember the the child care management system is integrated with the parent engagement platform. So when an immunization is due, the parent gets a notification inside the app, which is super powerful, um, and and that is used uh, that's used to set up all the alert logic. So let's say you have a, seri you know, a, a series of shots that are due. Not only will it remind the parent that they need to get this shot in you know, by the six month birthday, uh, but there are also subsequent shots due at 18 months and 24 months. So, so yes, um, so not only is the recording uh, and, the, and the, the, the dashboard there, um, but it's also the workflow side of it. So reminding parents. And then on the staff side, um, there are a, a, a number of new components here. Um, let me also add to that. that. That's kind of like a quick linear line to uh, COVID health check too. So the system will also prompt teachers as children are checked in to um, to ask your COVID questions, and and we can we will uh, customize it based on your state and the local guidance. So whatever you want, and then with staff too. So we're collecting all of their. Oops, I'm I'm terrible with a mouse. We're collecting all their medical information. Um, you can add their medical conditions. Um, of course, there's kind of a digital uh, signature here for HIPAA. Um, but you know, you, you want to know, I've had, we've had so many of our centers come to us and say, not only are we having to take temperatures now for staff, um, but we need to know if there are any allergies or, or even like the presence of, um, of diabetes. So if a, if a, a staff member is in a diabetic coma, we need to know what to do. Um, so yeah. That's actually really useful. Um, I know, uh, I'm, I'm not sure about in most uh, states or other places, it's required for us in New York where my center is located um, to keep track of the kids' immunizations and we would not be able to accept them for care if they're not you know, up to date. Um, and if you are a program that has a lot of infants and toddlers specifically, you know those immunizations are needed every couple of months, it feels like. So um, having a system that's automatically able to remind the parent directly that um, they're due for one would be great. Um, I do have another question from when everyone was registering, someone wants to know, um, is there a way to track uh, payroll? Yeah, 100%. Let me show you that. So, so today, Kangaroo Time has the full um, uh, kind of HR management system. So we will we'll keep track of all the hours, the schedule, all the time off, all accumulated time off. Um, so all the, uh, not only the schedule, but where, where the teach the staff should be for the day, um, but also the payroll. And coming by the end of this year, we will also be the payroll company. So we've, or we've done a partnership with one of the, the largest payroll provider in the US. Uh, and we will own the front end experience, um, all the scheduling, all the, we already own the clock in and clock out. They do that in our system. Um, we have overtime alerts, uh, things like that. And then um, you can take the reports 
and push those to your payroll provider. Uh, or like I said, later on in the year, you won't even have to do that. Um, all the payroll approval will be done here in uh, kangaroo time. That's exciting. <laughs> that's, we're that's, super pumped about it. In yeah, fact, that's really exciting. <laughs> um, and the, thesis, the thesis is that um, if you're paying monthly fees for payroll, we should be able to reduce what you're paying and give you a higher level of integration and automate more of the work. Right. Um, something like this, everything that you have been talking about is honestly really attractive for uh, a center like mine who has experienced uh, having so many different fees to go to so many different companies for different uh, services and purposes. Uh, Kangaroo Time is clearly like just a one-stop shop for all of these yeah. things. And if you are a provider that is watching this, and again, like I was saying in the beginning, doesn't have any sort of um, child care management software, I would strongly recommend that you do, even if you just have a smaller program like a home daycare. I started out in a home day with a home daycare program, and had I known that there were systems out here out like this, um, it would have made my life so much easier rather than doing everything by paper or doing it alone. So do more research and take advantage of um, things like this. I do want to ask one more question if you have time for it. Um, someone wants to know, are there timekeepers for parent pickup and drop off? I think you might have covered that. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, not only that, so remember our pickup and drop off is, is completely and totally uh, so, so it's, it exists in the app, right? And the audit trail, and I'll show it to you, it goes beyond just when did the parent check in? It goes into when was the parent on site? Uh, when did they actually click the button? When did the teacher confirm that they were there? So, and, and, and with um, pickups, you sometimes want to know who picked up the child on that day and exactly what time did the exchange of custody happen? So, um, oops, not that one. Um, you can go right to, it also has scheduling for children. I need to start demoing more so I know where everything is. Um, oh, attendance. So, so with attendance, the attendance log will show all of those different elements in the child's day. And you can filter by child, you can filter by classroom. Um, it doesn't matter, but you can see here uh, the, this Alex Federer, the requester requested at 827 and the employee, um, they finished it at 8.34. But let's just say that that's wrong and we need to edit it. It gives you the ability to edit it um, or keep it. Uh, but yeah, it'll give you the exact times in, the exact times out. Um, it'll give you a running total of their day. Again, if you have agency payments that give you uh, a certain amount, 80% at 24.9 hours, but they give you 100% for 25 hours. This is super critical and, and that the agency engine will help you with that. But yeah, uh, absolutely, you can keep track of all of those things. Perfect, that's good to know. Um, Tasha wants to know, will it automate a late fee uh, pick for pickup payments? Like, I guess if you if a child is late um, being picked up, can you automate things like that? Today, it will not. And here's why. Because the that, that timestamp is so important. That, that feature is coming, though. We've been working on it for a long time. So the example is 
I give you charge for overtime, a dollar or ten dollars a minute or whatever it is. Uh, that has to be kind of solidified the algorithm. Um, but I would say here in six months that feature will be live. The great advantage we have is the mobile app. So the framework is there. As far as I know, we would be the first to do it because it is kind of a bold feature. Uh, again, it goes back to that whole, um, you hire nurturers and very, very uh, kind people that, that are like off the charts on the agreeable scale. And that feature just helps them kind of be a little more, um, a little more conscientious with that time, that overtime that we need to keep parents accountable for. So it's coming, I love that question. Um, somebody needs to be on our product team. That's a great question. <laughs> uh, for now, if someone did, uh, for those of us that are, will be using kangaroo time, um, is there a way to adjust the parents' invoice, let's say? Because like my policy in my program is that if a parent picks up late, the um, late fee gets added onto their tuition bill. Absolutely. And it's super easy. And, and this is, again, something I learned when I was at a center. But let's just say you can search by family. Let's just say it was the Federer family, right? And you can go to the entire family, put in a, a quick, is there a late fee billing code? We'll just say, yep, here it is. Um, And you can add, it's a per child. So like, let's just okay. say it was a dollar a minute or whatever. Right. Oops, my math is terrible. <laughs> and then you can add that line up. This would be a tuition charge, right? Um, and that affects the taxability and you're done. You don't have to go into each and every um, billing box. You can search. But it's that quick. You can add a manual charge just like that. Right. Yeah, that did seem simple enough. Um, well, thank you so much, Scott. The, it was so interesting uh, learning about the ins and outs and like, you know, the back end of this uh, software uh, development and exactly how it can be beneficial to us as child care providers. Um, I'm sure I'll get a lot of more questions on uh, when this does get published to YouTube and I'll send them your way if you guys don't mind answering. Um, and if there are no other questions from those of us that are watching live, I think we can go ahead and end it off here. Awesome. All right, Danny, thank you so much. Really appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this information was useful to you. Definitely check out the links and resources down below in the description box. And don't forget to register for next week's workshop that will be held on Wednesday, July 8th. Be sure to like this video if you did and make sure that you are subscribed. Scroll down and click that subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you.